Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode we are going to be discussing the Finwing Olberbird, the Foxeer Razer Nano FPV camera, and also the Runcam Hybrid 4K camera as well. So as you may have seen just a few moments ago, we had a bit of a whoopsie on the first launch, uh, and that was because Matt was using... Oh, and we're going to talk about iNav. We've got this is, I need to give you a heads up, about an 18 minute video, uh, so we are going to be covering all the topics uh, aforementioned and probably some more. So do pull up, grab yourself a coffee, mm, and dig in. So first things first, I, I, I just need to put all cameras, the, the defense here for, for myself is that I made a bit of a whoopsie, as you would have noticed just then. Uh, we did have a failed launch, and I'll talk about auto launch, I'll write that down now as well, uh, auto launch, uh, and the cameras got a little bit misted up. Plus, we also need to be a little bit forgiving for the cameras, because on this day, it, as you'll see when we're in the sky very shortly, uh, there is an awful lot of mist kicking around, which was absolutely brilliant to fly in so when you get up into the sky uh, as we're now in the sky now is that you will start to notice a it's quite hazy and that's because we've got some moisture on the cameras which does improve in a few moments time but also the amount of haze out there is really unreal oh can i just point out right now the camera in the bottom left hand corner that is the runcam hybrid 4k camera uh, sorry that is the runcam FPV camera in the hybrid system and look how well those clouds are coming out that was one thing which I really did notice yesterday uh, was that how well the camera coats with like a, uh, a wide dynamic range of coloring oh and we've just been in flicked to the Fox here Razer Nano camera which we will discuss in a few moments time and actually you may work out I really do kind of like the view which we've got on here uh, so you may see me flying in that kind of view quite a lot uh, so we have the FPV camera view in the bottom left hand corner and then the big HD camera which we're just looking around now uh, that is the footage from the Runcam 4K which I have to admit I'm quite impressed with however I do have one or two reservations which was the kind of point of this video so let's just start, let's start at the beginning, okay? So you may notice me panning and tilting around, and in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll also see the front camera moving around as well. So what I've been and got on the Olberbird is that I've got pan and tilt on the front, and that's where the Runcam 4K is. That's where the big image behind uh, is coming from. And you'll notice, actually, in the, in the big image in the background that how misty it is out there today. There is a lot of of low hanging mist it was really early in the morning the sun had only just came up uh, come up okay so i've got pan and tilt on the front uh, which i'll include a screenshot for you so you can see what it's like and i'll put a link to that in the video description for you so you can print your own from thingiverse if you've got a runcam 4k uh, now the other camera view which we're looking at right now from the tail is a Foxeer Nano, uh, sorry, a Foxeer Razer Nano FPV camera. And you'll notice the picture quality on it is pretty good. Look out for me flicking between uh, both this tail camera view uh, and also the front camera. And you, you'll see that there is a definite difference in qualities between the two cameras. However, I, I feel it's really important to like kind of stress that the, ah, there you go, see, see, see the two different cameras, they, they're two different different sets of ranges of colours in between them, but um, both are a little bit misty because you saw that special launch a few moments ago, but uh, they, they are somewhat comparable, however the big difference is, is that the, they, if we flip back to that one, it still is pretty damn clear isn't it? Now the thing is, is that the shocker is, is that the Foxeer Razer Nano is £13 okay we'll say about 16 17 us dollars which is silly money for an fpv camera you you will now understand why i own three of those razor cameras because they are just so so short uh so 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 good uh, in short for the money i ca I, I cannot give any complaints about the Foxy razor nano and, and and i wanted to do like a, a review on this but the best way of like me explaining this camera to you is to show you just look at that low hanging mist uh, and then look how and again we're going off topic we're looking at the run cam 4k you'll see that it's picking up the beautiful blues in the ground we're getting some nice vibrant colors down on the ground as well which and you may think that matt that's maybe saturated a little bit too much 
But I can tell you from my experience as a, as a pilot, I like to see high contrasts uh, on the ground, especially when you're dealing with different types of green and you're tree bashing, for example, which is not something which I would do to the Oba bird, I hasten to add, but it is nice to see that and I quite like a saturated uh, view with inside the camera. Now, you'll also notice that there is a red dot flashing in the uh, FPV, in the DVR footage just underneath the 15, which we, well, it was there a moment ago. That's telling us that the Runcam 4K is actually recording. Uh, it will tell you if it's just a HD preview and you can start or stop the camera from recording by pressing the little button on the back. And apologies, I, I was there raving about the uh, Foxy Razor Nano, which we're using right now. And we've got that up on the tail of the Alba Bird. Uh, and as you can see, the picture, picture quality is not as saturated as the run cam. Uh, and I don't believe there's any settings which we can change on it. It is just what it is, but we must remember it's absolutely tiny, uh, weighs literally only a few grams uh, and only costs 13 quid. So we do have to cut it quite a lot of slack. The one negative which I would mention, and that view is just amazing. <laughs> You've got to admit, that is pretty damn cool, isn't it? And it's really damn cool to get it both with HD and in the FPV camera and to be pretty much seeing exactly the same thing. Right, sorry. We're going back to the Foxo Razor Nano now. The, my, my only gripe, and it would be also be your only gripe as well when it comes to the, the Razor Nano, is the, the voltage range. You can only run it between 4.5 and 7 volts, which to me and you, that basically means we can only run it on 5 volts. The thing is, is that if you run it any higher, so if you run it on 2S, that little camera does get remarkably hot. In fact, hot enough to melt hot glue. So my suggestion for you is that if you do go for one of these cameras, you are gonna need a Beck to power it. Uh, and just look at that view, it, not only in the HD version, but also with that Razer Nano 2. Absolutely beautiful. I so enjoyed the Olba Bird that day, really did. We'll get, to the, we'll get to the Olba Bird in a moment. So yeah, cutting it some slack, it's cheap, but it works really, really well, but it does take a specific voltage range which is basically five volts so you only ever should feed it five volts and i haven't noticed it getting particularly hot on five volts it was just when i was running mine on 2s it literally melted its way out of the front of the drift which is the first camera which i put into that model i actually run a cadillac's ratel starlight at the moment in the front of there which has worked out pretty well a topic for a different day so let's get back to the topic of the run cam hybrid uh, so that cost me about £84, we'll say $100 US, and I've got to be honest with you, I, I, I'm sat here and I have mixed feelings about the Runcam Hybrid. I, on one hand, is that I liked the compact package of it. I like that I can have FPV and HD all in one package. I think that's really, really good. And it's specialized to, to the requirement. It fits the front of the note of binary fantastically well. Uh, and the video quality, you've got to agree, is pretty damn good. It is very good. For a moist lens on a moist morning, this is doing just as good as the Runcam 4K dedicated, sorry, the Runcam 2 4K version. It's doing just as good. If not, I would say, potentially a little bit better so yeah the run cam hybrid I, I i am having mixed feelings about this and the reason why i'm having mixed feelings is that unlike uh, perhaps a run cam 2 hybrid so let me just note the time there a moment so we are uh, 109 is that what i'll do is up on the screen i'll put a photograph of the or picture of the camera which i'm talking about it's a it's an action camera which is great because it's perfect for me because i like to tree bash and the nice thing about the run cam 2 4k is that you can literally just un velcro it and put it on another model and that works really really well it makes it very affordable and that is the bit which i'm struggling upon just look at those shadows on the ground can you see that on the right hand side that just that is just that's how early it was in the morning and that is just oh <laughs> and then we go and check out the twins life is good you know oh Right, I, I, no apologies for going off on a bender then. Uh, that's just me, and I in, really, really do enjoy 
uh, my flights and also going back and viewing the flights as well. So I'm, I'm getting something out of this narration as much as you're probably getting an insight into some FPV cameras, the Runcam 4K and the Orbital Bird and a fantastic flight at the same time. My reservation with the Runcam hybrid is just purely down to cost and also I have to say fragility as well. Unlike the Runcam 2 which is in a plastic housing uh, and can and it will and it literally did yesterday take a massive slap in the ground, the Runcam hybrid will frankly not. It is uh, an unprotected circuit board uh, which is mounted on the front nose of your aircraft and open to all and every element which is thrown at it. Uh, and while the cable does look robust, I would question its durability, especially, and I am doing it an unfair comparison uh, compared to the uh, Runcam 2, because the Runcam 2 is in a plastic shell, so you could literally smack it into a tree, which I've done many, many times with the previous version, uh, and it would not be an issue at all. So yeah, that's my reservations. And plus, it, it just get, it would just get so expensive, wouldn't it? If you wanted a Runcam 4K uh, on the hybrid on every single one of your models, it would get silly, silly expensive. So we've just gone from one extreme to another. We've talked about the Foxio Razor Nano, which is absolutely tiny and 13 quid. Uh, and like I said, I now own and purchased out of my own money three of them. Uh, the Runcam Hybrid is yeah. Good quality picture, like the FPV camera for sure, as we're seeing here in the, in this recording. However, I'm I do have reservations on it just because of its fragility. So those of you which know my flying uh, will thoroughly understand what what I mean by that is that I don't think it would take a, a slap. Also, you will notice that there is a there's a slight difference now in the timings of these two. So the DVR footage was recorded on the ground station uh, and the HD was recorded directly on the camera and there is uh, a few milliseconds difference or so or about half a second difference now uh, between the two and that's just the difference between the recording systems. Uh, so I'm looking here at the edits in timeline and in the HD version we've had two cuts uh, and in the DVR we've only had one cut. Uh, between the files so yeah there is a slight difference in there which is frankly to be expected because the both of them will need to finish writing the file and then start a new file which does cause a little bit of lag that's a consideration to use in a hybrid system especially if you're recording DVR at the same time and just look how good the Runcam 4K uh, sorry the, the Runcam hybrid 4K is doing from the FPV FPV view in the left hand side just look at those clouds you can even see the haze in there as well I think that was a key feature I was quite impressed with the FPV camera on this one uh, it was quite detailed and I really like the saturation in fact you can even argue that maybe the H4K version maybe needs a few tweaks just to bring up the saturation on those greens but it's purely unedited video right the last topic of this conversation uh, is about the Olber bird now right at the beginning we had a failed auto launch with iNav and that was purely down to my fault uh, I do need to tweak some settings when it comes to auto launch and I'm going to cover those in a later video so that you kind of know the tools which you've got available to you uh, and how to deal with different situations. Also what you may have noticed a few moments ago in the on-screen display is the amount of throttle which I'm using to fly the Olber Bird. When I first set this model up is that I'm using Sunny Sky X2212 980 kV motors uh, and you obviously realize that that's really quite low kV. If you combine that with a 7 inch or well, 7x4.55, 7 uh, 70.45 propeller, is that you'll now realize that it is heavily under propped. Uh, uh, hence, that I'm only flying around on 4 amps. So, two motors running on 4 amps, <laughs> okay, is not a lot, is it? If you're considering we're doing about 28 kilometers an hour into a mild 30 kilometers an hour into a mild headwind okay so extremely low current but also extremely low thrust and i was able to fly around on pretty much 90 percent throttle for the vast vast majority of the flight 
So later on in the day, I landed and I swapped the propellers over to eight by sixes, and that was a massive marked improvement. I was getting the same performance for about 43% throttle, uh, and yes, I was pulling anywhere between five to six amps, which is, you've got to be fair to this older bird with that motor and prop combination, remember there's two motors here, is that my Mini Talon cruises on six to seven amps. I won't really drop below that. Whereas this Alba Bird was doing a comparable speed with two motors for a comparable current draw. Lots and lots of potential there. Now, the one negative which I noticed during the build was that the foam was a bit soft and Josh over on the when you see the funny farm video from this day you'll see that Josh I asked Josh about that and he compares it to the mini talon and he says well no and ah and then he found a soft spot and then he really realized he'd noticed it himself so the model itself I would say the fuselage was that and the wings were slightly softer than ideal foam uh, in them especially compared to other EPO models which I have here the other issue which I had with the Olber is that it was hitting CG. So we're flying around with a 5200 4S pack in the nose, and then I had to pack a 2200 3S pack also in the nose to hit the center of gravity. Now, obviously there's a few things which have uh, contributed to that. I have got a collection of wires in the tail, which I can definitely move forwards. I also have a little tail cam and a servo in the tail as well uh, and yes it's just like the fat kid on the seesaw if you've got a big kid on one side and not a lot of weight on another that's going to cause you issues in the nose but yeah I, I think we're going back to that same old story that two more inches in the nose would have been perhaps highly appreciated when you look at the older bird on the desk you'll see how even with the motors forwards of the center of gravity just because of the size, the sheer size of the tail of the model itself. And yes, I know I have amplified things by having a, a tiny little servo and a tiny little F uh, FPV camera on the back. But that said, is that it was still difficult to do it. So I am gonna have to run at least one 5200 pack or maybe move into Lion batteries, which I have, and that was actually, to be honest, my sole intention for the for the Alba Bird was to create a dedicated Lion pack for this. So that's the 18650 batteries uh, and fly it with this model. So we do have the landing coming up in a moment, and Josh was on for jumping over the Alba Bird, which to be fair, he did a quite a good job at jumping over it. And I do have a fantastic <laughs> <laughs> uh, photo of that as well uh, so you'll see we could just coming across just checking the uh, speed so that's a 90% throttle for 60 kilometers an hour for seven eight amps something like that oh there you go full throttle for eight amps uh, and that was with this with that that was with the lower props and you'll notice that I am using quite a lot of throttle just to to keep the speed up and for me to have the confidence uh, with the model uh, on the ground. And also I, I do, there was quite a, quite a bit of configuration which I need to now go on and do with this model because I was not very happy with its behavior in horizon mode. And one of the jobs for me today is to get into the iNav fixed wing group and see if anybody's got any PIDs or any auto tunes for their Olber bird, which they would be willing to share. Now you'll notice that I have now flicked down into manual mode and also the cameras are out of phase a little bit. We are a good half a second or so behind the DVR and the HD, which is like I mentioned early, earlier to be expected. So on that note, it's time for me to wrap up. We do have the, our final approach coming up uh, and I will be doing my best to take out Josh. With that said, a big Massive thank you to you for taking the time to join me for this video on the Alba Bird, the Foxeer Razor Nano and the Runcam Hybrid. Oh, by the way, I'll put links to everything which I've discussed in the video description for you, including the build overview and the full rundown to the Alba Bird as well. Look out for a full summary on that very, very shortly. So for myself, Matt, cheerios! Oh, and thank you, Josh, for picking my model up. <laughs>